Hey folks, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to go over three worked examples covering how to combine uncertainties for a measurement. If you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned there to these questions. So let's get started. Question one says, a digital balance gives a reading of 15.86 grams for a metal block. The manufacturer claims it is accurate to 0.005 grams. Only one reading is taken. Calculate the total uncertainty in the reading. Well, the first thing we need to think about is what is our calibration uncertainty, our scale reading uncertainty, and our random uncertainty. So my calibration uncertainty, first of all, is equal to plus or minus 0.005 grams. The scale reading uncertainty in the digital scale that we're using here is equal to plus or minus one of the least significant digit, which is equal to plus or minus 0.01 grams. And we can see that if we look at this reading here, because the least accurate value is going to be when this six takes a value of one. So this would be 0.01 grams. And lastly, there's no random uncertainty in this case since only one reading is taken. Because remember, a random uncertainty arises due to fluctuations in repeated measurements, but there's no repeated measurements here. We can then use our relationship for the total uncertainty, which is equal to the square root of the calibration uncertainty squared plus the scale reading uncertainty squared. And then you'll notice I've scored out the random uncertainty because we don't need it. This is equal to the square root of 0.005 squared plus 0.01 squared which is equal to plus or minus 0.02 grams. Notice that I've stated this to one significant figure, which we should always be doing for random uncertainties. And then if we wanted to write this in absolute form with our result plus or minus the uncertainty, we have the m equals 15.86 plus or minus 0.02 grams. Question two says that the period of a pendulum is measured five times and the mean period is found to be 1.86 seconds. You'll see we're given the random calibration and scale reading uncertainty values where we've got random uncertainties plus or minus 0.01 seconds, the calibration uncertainty is plus or minus 0.05 seconds, and the scale reading uncertainty is plus or minus 0.05 seconds as well. Then says calculate the total uncertainty in the final result. So this time we're given our three types of uncertainties, so we don't need to write them down. But the first thing you should notice is that the random uncertainty is less than one third of the other uncertainties. So that means that we can ignore it. So we then write down our total uncertainty is equal to the square root of the calibration uncertainty squared plus the scale reading uncertainty squared. But again, I've scored out random uncertainty just like in question one, because we can ignore it in this case. Substituting in our numbers, we then have this is equal to the square root of 0.05 squared plus 0.05 squared, which is equal to plus or minus 0.07 seconds. Again, I've stated this to one significant figure. And lastly, although the question doesn't ask for it, if we wanted to write down our final result, plus or minus the total uncertainty, then we get period t is equal to 1.86 plus or minus 0.07 seconds. Question three is a bit longer, and it says the digital ammeter shown below is used to make measurements during an experiment. And we can see on the screen there, we've got a reading of 57.0 milliamps. The manufacturer states that on the range used, it will have a calibration uncertainty of plus or minus 0.02 milliamps. The following readings are taken when the experiment is repeated several times. So we get these one, two, three, four, five, six sets of readings here in milliamps. And part A says state the scale reading uncertainty for the meter. Well, we can work out what the scale reading uncertainty is in our digital scale, either by looking at the screen here or the results over here. So the scale reading uncertainty, remember, is equal to plus or minus one of the least significant digit, which is gonna be when this zero value takes a one. So that gives us an answer of plus or minus 0.1 milliamps. Part B says to calculate the mean value of the readings. Well, remember to get our mean, we add up all our measurements and we divide by how many measurements we have in total. So if we do that, we get this sum divided by six, which is equal to 56.9 milliamps. Part C says to calculate the random uncertainty in the mean. So remember to calculate the random uncertainty. We take our maximum value, subtract the minimum value and divide by our total number of measurements in. So this is equal to 57.2 minus 56.0 divided by six. And this gives an answer of plus or minus 0.2 milliamps. Lastly, part D says to calculate the total uncertainty in the mean. Well, in this case, because our calibration uncertainty is less than one third of the other uncertainties, that means we can ignore it. So just to show you that that is the case, remember our calibration uncertainty was plus or minus 0.02 milliamps, and our scale reading uncertainty was only plus or minus 0.1 milliamps, so this is definitely less than a third of this. And then our random uncertainty, remember, was plus or minus 0.2 milliamps, compared to plus or minus 0.02 milliamps for the calibration uncertainty. So we then want to write down our relationship, so we've got total uncertainty is equal to the square root of the scale reading uncertainty squared plus the random uncertainty squared. Notice again that I've removed the calibration uncertainty because we don't need it, and we sub in our 0.1 squared plus 0.2 squared, 
and this gives us an answer once you square root it of plus or minus 0.2 milliamps. Again, to one significant figure there. If you wanted to write down your final result with your total uncertainty, you would get a current I of 56.9 plus or minus 0.2 milliamps. That's all for this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and make sure you click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.